Hello friends, and welcome back to Missing Mondays. Tattooed Biker here with you. Richard Patron Jr. and Danielle Imbo. A new couple set out on a bitter winter's night filled with the warmth of companionship and the promise of a new dawn, but their journey took an inexplicable turn into an abyss from which they never returned. Join me, and we'll explore the haunting echoes of their disappearance. Chasing shadows in search of the truth, forever etched in the annals of the unknown. So now, let's take a ride to Pennsylvania. Danielle Embo was born on August 7, 1970, in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to parents John and Phyllis Audubre. Her father, a singer, who went by the stage name of Johnny October, he rose to fame in the 1950s as a member of the doo-wop group The Four Dates, which eventually became a backup group for popular singer Frankie Avalon. As the daughter of a musician, Danielle developed a deep love for music and enjoyed singing and attending concerts. She was also an avid reader of murder mysteries and worked as a loan processor. Those close to Danielle knew her as a kind and outgoing person as well as a dedicated mother to her 18-month-old son, Joe Jr. Richard Patron Jr. was born on August 29, 1969, in Philadelphia, to parents Richard and Margaret. Described as hardworking, laid-back, family-oriented, and compassionate, Richard was a devoted single father to his 14-year-old daughter, Angela, and worked at his family's bakery. Viking Pastries in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Like Danielle, Richard loved music, especially rock. Additionally, he enjoyed watching sports and was a big fan of the Chicago Bears. In 2004, Danielle's husband, Joe Embo, flew to Houston to see the Super Bowl, leaving behind his wife and baby, both of whom had a cold at the time. When he got back, he announced that he had met another woman on the plane and wanted a divorce. Though shocked and deeply hurt, Danielle complied with Joe's wishes and the two began divorce proceedings. Sadly, the separation took a toll on Danielle, who began chain smoking and dropped an alarming amount of weight. This is when Richard Patron came back into her life. Richard and Danielle grew up in the same neighborhood and had known each other for most of their lives. Danielle was close friends with Richard's sister, but had lost touch with Richard over the years. However, they hit it off immediately upon reconnecting and soon began dating. Richard had never felt this strongly about a woman before, according to his daughter Angela. Quote, Danielle was the first girl that he ever really fell in love with, wanted to dedicate his life to. End quote. Though the pair were happy together, Danielle was still in the middle of a painful divorce and decided that it would be best if she and Richard didn't see each other for a while, so she could put her entire focus on the baby as well as getting through the divorce proceedings. As much as this hurt Richard, he respected Danielle's wishes and stayed away. Unsurprisingly, Joe's new relationship ended abruptly, and it wasn't long before he asked Danielle to reconcile and give their marriage another chance. While she still had feelings for her husband, she also felt that a divorce was the right decision. Joe was allegedly controlling and short-tempered, and his pleas for reconciliation often erupted into explosive arguments. On one of these occasions, Joe reportedly became so angry that he threw his son's high chair at the wall, although he would later deny this accusation. On February 19, 2005, Richard was eating dinner alone at a bar when he decided that he wanted to go somewhere to see live music. However, he didn't want to go alone, so he called his sister, Christine, and asked if she'd like to join him. She declined, but passed on the invitation to Danielle, who happened to be visiting her at the time. Joe had the baby and was out of town that night. Richard and Danielle hadn't spoken in weeks, but she accepted the invitation to his surprise. According to a profile in Philly Mag, Danielle fronted a rock band around New Jersey and boasted a singer's outgoing personality. And after the trouble she had had with her estranged husband, 
she had responded to Richard's gentler approach. He picked her up in his 2001 Black Dodge Dakota, and the two of them went to a bar called Abilene's on Philadelphia's South Street, meeting up with Richard's friends, Anthony and Michelle. They watched a band perform, and by all accounts, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. In fact, Richard and Danielle looked happy, and were seen sitting close to each other and kissing inside the bar. They also compared their schedules for the following weekend as if to plan another date. Anthony and Michelle asked the couple to go with them to another bar, but both declined, explaining that they each had an early morning the next day and didn't want to stay up too late. Then, at approximately 11.45 p.m., they prepared to leave, and Richard was overheard saying that he would drive Danielle home to Mount Laurel before returning to South Philly. They walked outside into the evening air together and haven't been seen or heard from ever since. It's unknown where Richard parked his truck, but it can be reasonably narrowed down because he made a comment to Anthony that night about being happy that he was able to get a parking space so close to the bar. The next morning, Danielle missed her hair appointment, and throughout the day, both her cell phone and Richard's both went straight to voicemail. Their families became increasingly concerned. Danielle's brother, John Audubray, decided to go check on her, using the spare key she had given him to enter her home. It was dark inside, and nothing seemed suspicious or out of place. But by 3 p.m., the time Joe Jr. was usually dropped off by his father, Danielle still wasn't home. That's when John knew something was wrong. She wouldn't have missed that. No way, he later remarked. Both Danielle and Richard were close to their families and in frequent contact with them. It wasn't like either of them to disappear with no explanation. When Joe arrived at Danielle's home that afternoon to drop off little Joe, he found her family there, but not Danielle. John tried to cover for her by saying that she couldn't be there right now, and they had asked him to take care of Joe Jr. in her absence. However, as the hours went by with no word, their families panicked and reported them missing. Thus, the search began. Unlike the police, Danielle's family wasn't about to wait the 48 hours to start their search. As soon as night fell, John and Richard Patron Sr. drove through the city streets and checked the highway routes in search of Richard's truck, slowing down to peer down every side street and back alley between Philly and Mount Laurel. They even checked the city's waterways and overpasses, including the Walt Whitman, Ben Franklin, and Betsy Ross Bridges. Finally, at sunrise, they went home. That day, friends and volunteers organized a grid search, that covered a hundred miles in every direction, carrying pictures of Richard's truck and its license plate number. John spent $1,200 hiring a Camden police officer to commandeer a helicopter, which they used to scour the city from above. But no one found anything. According to one report, a police deputy said to John, quote, No one is ever going to find anything. It's just too clean. End quote. Despite several extensive searches, no sign of Danielle and Richard, nor the truck, could be found. There were no eyewitness accounts of them after leaving the bar. They didn't appear on any of the toll bridge cameras after leaving Abilene's, and when investigators checked the couple's bank accounts, credit cards, and cell phones, nothing unusual came up. So what happened to the couple? How did Danielle Embo and Richard Patron vanish into thin air? One theory is that they accidentally drove into the nearby Delaware River. But those familiar with the Philadelphia area believe that this is an unlikely explanation, as there is an easy, direct access to the river from the street. Another possible explanation is that they were carjacked and murdered, with the truck taken to a chop shop and sold for parts. This idea seemed plausible to some. After all, some 13,000 vehicles were stolen in the Philadelphia area in 2004 alone. The FBI and Philadelphia Stolen Car Squad worked in conjunction to investigate this lead, 
but it ultimately went nowhere, as no evidence of a carjacking could be found. FBI involvement in a missing persons case is relatively rare, so what compelled them to join this particular investigation? In 2014, FBI Special Agent Vito Roselli, the investigator in charge of the case, put out a press release stating, quote, Making two people and a truck disappear, with no witnesses and no evidence of any kind for nine years, suggests methodical planning. It's possible a perpetrator could just get lucky, but it's more likely just what it looks like. Someone behind this knew what they were doing, end quote. Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron were, according to the FBI, likely the victims of a murder-for-hire plot. Given how cleanly and abruptly they disappeared, without any evidence left behind, this seemed like a plausible explanation. But who would want to hurt them, and why? The first people that the authorities looked into were the last ones known to have seen Richard and Danielle before they vanished. Richard's friends Anthony and Michelle. Both were questioned multiple times, but ultimately detectives came to believe that neither was involved in the disappearance. The next logical suspect was Danielle's husband. However, his alibi was verified. Joe was 50 miles away at a children's birthday party that day. A party at which his stepfather, a former NYPD officer, was in attendance. Joe took a polygraph test as well, but the results were inconclusive. During the investigation, it was revealed that Joe possessed the password to Danielle's voicemail and had accessed her account multiple times in the months leading up to her disappearance. Another fact that came to light was that Joe made several threatening phone calls to Richard, both at his home and workplace during the same time frame, warning him to stop seeing his wife. Nevertheless, no solid evidence for Joe's involvement was discovered and he is adamantly denied being involved. No other suspects have been identified either. According to J.J. Claver of the FBI, quote, We're not identifying anybody as a suspect, but we're not ruling anyone out. Everyone is ruled in at this point. End quote. A tip was received from a local waitress about a broken gate near the Delaware River. It appeared that someone had driven through it. A search was conducted of the river in that area, and several vehicles were found, but Richards Dodge Dakota wasn't among them. In 2021, the FBI released a new statement reporting that an extensive investigation to date has generated some promising leads. However, neither they nor the vehicle has ever been located. In March of 2022, a private Oregon-based search and recovery dive team, known as Adventures with Purpose, announced that they were working on the case. The team has solved 11 of its 36 missing persons investigations since 2021 and carried out multiple dives in the Delaware River. Doug Bishop, one of the group's members, told CBS in an interview, quote, I know the FBI's position is that there is foul play and that the vehicle has somehow made it to a chop shop. However, there's no actual information leading to suspect those types of conclusions. So our specialty is water. We know we have a couple that's missing and missing with their vehicle. And so we're going to do what we do best, end quote. So far, however, no evidence relevant to the disappearance of Richard and Danielle has been recovered from the river. There is currently a $50,000 reward for information leading to the location of Richard and Danielle and or to the arrest of those responsible for the disappearance. The case is still open and being actively investigated by the FBI, Philadelphia Police Department, Mount Laurel Police Department, New Jersey State Police, and the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office. Though the whereabouts of Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron, as well as the events leading up to their disappearance, remain a mystery. Their families are still holding out hope that the case will be solved someday and that they will be able to give their loved ones a proper resting place. If you've ever had the feeling that something's wrong, something's just not right, 
I think everyone has that once in their life. Just something doesn't feel right. We have that feeling from the time I wake up and the time I go to bed. According to Danielle's brother John, describing what it's like not knowing what happened to Danielle. And there it is. All I have for tonight. The memories of Richard Patron Jr. and Danielle Limbo continue to linger in the hearts of those who hold them dear. Their disappearance remains a stark reminder of the depths into which life's mysteries can plunge us. As we bring this chapter to a close, let us never forget the unending search for answers, for the truth is a beacon that guides us even through the darkest of nights. So we bid farewell to Richard and Danielle, forever preserved in our thoughts and hope that one day their story will shed light on the void that devoured their presence bringing solace to those who grieve and justice to those who wait. So till next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you on Down the Roadways. Biker, out.